flattered and truly honored. Um, I do want to thank the um, uh, LGBT initiative for hosting this event. They do wonderful work. Our archive is extraordinary. Um, and Kerry, anytime you want a job marketing out magazine, you've got it. Thank you for that pitch. Um, I wanted to just start by, I was trying to think of a little story um, to introduce Don and I realized the first and, and last time I met Don was actually for an Out Magazine shoot. Um, we were shooting for something called the Out 100. And um, for some reason, we got it, or I got it into my head, that we would um, style Don as this sort of very dapper gentleman sitting in a kind of country garden, um, roses sort of sprouting from the bushes. Don was in a lovely white boater and a suit. And um, we added a, a young artist into the shot, and we decided he should just be standing there wearing a Speedo um, and, and a pair of garden shears in his hands. And I, I was quite happy with the shot. It came out really well. The issue looked great. And then I was, uh, I was showing it to a friend, and he said, you know, this is great, we've got it all wrong. He said, Don Bacardi should be the object of desire. So I would like to introduce you to your object of desire tonight, Don Bacardi. <laughs> No, I don't think who got it wrong. No, I, uh, he was very attractive. Yeah, he was very attractive. Yeah. So, um, Don, I think you were going to start by reading some of your letters for us. Um, Do you have anything picked out? Yes, um, uh, I'm going to read um, um, two uh, from uh, Chris. Um, um, this is uh, from... Um, uh, January 26, uh, 1964. Um, I, 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 uh, I was in um, uh, New York uh, at the time. In fact, um, um, that's when I got a, a job from Lincoln Kirstein to do uh, portraits of the New York City Ballet. All of the um, uh, featured uh, dancers for a uh, portfolio, which was uh, supposed to be um, sold um, um, as a souvenir um, uh, program and um, uh, never got uh, seen by the public. Uh, and uh, um, uh, I only got a, a box of uh, um, 100 uh, copies uh, and um, never saw Lincoln again at the end of it. But anyway, um, uh, we've been very good friends up until that point. And um, uh, uh, Lincoln and Chris uh, uh, first met uh, in 1939 when um, uh, Chris and uh, Winston and Orton um, uh, came to New York for the first time. Uh, in 38, actually, that, that was. But anyway, this is a letter from Chris in um, Britain in 1964. And um, I think I must uh, uh, just have uh, arrived in uh, New York. Uh, dearest love, just to let you know, I arrived safely. Uh, he was coming back from visiting me in New York, that's just to let you know, I arrived just, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. I arrived safely to find the house more or less in one piece. There was an earthquake described by Torth, uh, Dorothy, uh, she was our uh, black uh, maid, uh, not our, our cleaning woman, and sometimes quote. Um, uh, 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 there was an earthquake described by Dorothy as it sounded like the Chinese were coming. <laughs> and as a result, the floor of the front bathroom is just a bit more cracked. Nothing else. A windstorm blasted those trailing plants in boxes which used to hang on the deck and broke a limb from the tree, but nothing serious. The garden is growing up all right. Uh, some more rain got into your studio but no damage. I moved a stack of drawings out of reach in case there is more. Today is cold and gray. Yesterday, I had a sort of flu and stayed in bed and slept hours and hours. Today, I'm better. Friday, Gavin and I went to see Burton and Liz, who were at the, at 
Bay in the Beverly Wilshire and route to Toronto and Hamlet. They were very sweet when we finally got to them through a cordon of newsmen, photographers, and cops. And we had supper together, and Richard seemed quite terrific and not really fat at all. <laughs> uh, the beach at Falesa seems very much on. That was a, um, an adaptation of uh, the Stevenson story that Chris was to write for him. Um, he's very much on, and I, and you, if you are free, will go to Boston in March and see Hamlet and make the final arrangements. Mountains of Christmas cards for both of us. He'd been away a long time. There was one from Jimmy Doherty, looking for it today, I can't find it. So maybe you should call him. <laughs> also a little juju candy man from the small end. Also, there are some brushes and pencils for you, left, I presume, by Jim Cole. He said he would do this, but no note and no money. I called Frank Wiley, who says he has heard nothing from Jim so far. The house is very clean and calm after India. I have been walking around in white socks and there isn't one speck of dirt on them. Dorothy is coming tomorrow, but more is a social call. So far, I have just spoken to her on the phone. I'm driving up Wednesday to see the Warner Brown show. Uh, that was uh, Paul Warner and Bill Brown. They were close friends of ours and very good artists. Uh, Joe and Ben write that they will be home in about a week. That was um, our best uh, heterosexual uh, uh, friends, um, uh, Joe Lathwood and uh, Ben Masterly. Um, um, I wrote back asking to have supper uh, with us, me. Uh, he wrote to them uh, asking to have supper with us, me, the evening they returned. Dubbin misses his dear love and hopes he will be able to come back soon. The time in New York with his kitten was very happy, one, uh, a happy one uh, for him. That camera mad Roddy McDowell has sent a really rather sweet picture of the animals in front of a window waiting <laughs> to be fed. Love from a wheezy but ever faithful old horse. <laughs> Drop. And then there's a postscript. A Mr. A. M. Sheridan Smith writes from Melbourne. As Mr. White will be going away shortly, he was Chris's uh, editor at uh, Methuen. Uh, he asked me to write to you about the jacket for a single man. I wonder if you have any ideas on the matter. Don Bacardi's design for down there on a visit was particularly successful, I think. Uh, Chris uh, says, I replied, saying that you were going to design the jacket and that you already had a good idea for it and would they please write and say what the deadline is. If you care to write him, not necessary, I think. The new address is Methuen and Company Limited, and so forth. Why is it that one remembers so much to say after one has signed a letter? <laughs> I have no idea for the jacket of a single man. I mean, one of them, as I suppose, you do two different ones. Uh, a wrecked automobile turned over in a ditch. It's horribly corny, but I keep thinking of it. What do you say? I like it very much now, the idea, and I'm, I'm sorry um, um, uh, it wasn't you. Um, uh, and probably because um, uh, I, I did uh, design myself, uh, so I'm responsible. Um, further Adventures of Dorothy. Our cesspool backed up and filled both toilets and the kitchen sink with stinking water. I'm just a bit skeptical about this. All seems well now, 
And how could it have backed up all that far? Um, I've been in that house uh, more than 50 years now and uh, never had such a, uh, an accident as that, I'm happy to say. Um, two or three youths attempted to rob a house on Maybury Road that was just below us. The police traced them. They ran up our stairs to the gate. One of them yelled, it's locked. So they turned around and ran down again into the arms of the cops. <laughs> this, the most improbable story of the year, is also told by Dorothy, who claims she watched the whole thing from the balcony. Well, maybe I misunderstood her. Your car isn't here. I presume your father still has it. Tried calling Ted, that's my brother, but so far, no answer. Maybe I don't have the right number. Now, just um, uh, um, a few months before, um, he wrote a letter uh, uh, from uh, Santa Monica, and um, uh, it was probably the most uh, difficult period of our um, years together, uh, the time we nearly split up. Uh, Monday morning, March 11th, 1963. You have just left, and oh dear, I feel so miserable at the complexity of everything and the difficulty I have in talking to you. I mean, I really understand so much more than I can express in conversation. There's your painting problem. Almost nothing I can do about that. I often feel you don't even want my sympathy, but just for me to get the hell out and leave you alone. That's perfectly all right, but it's among the many things we don't seem to be able to say to each other without hurt feelings on my side, irritation on yours. The irony of it is that you can help me with my writing problems very considerably. So the situation is one-sided. Then there's Bill. That was uh, uh, a young man I was uh, having an affair on the side with at the time. If only we could talk about that. But I guess it's impossible because you feel that I'm trying to own the relationship or sponsor it or whatever you say just by talking about it. But all I really want you to know is that I do see why it has to be, and I'm glad about it. Much more than that, I really do accept it as part of our life together. But even if I say that much, it sounds sort of possessive, as though I were trying to make it into a mere colony of the Kitty Dobbin Empire. Anyhow, I won't pretend that I adore being alone those evenings, but that's my business. It always has been a weakness of mine, and one which I should get over. It's childishness, really, something to do with the dark. Because during the daytime, I couldn't be happier by myself. Well, anyhow, that is connected with these involvements I create. And there, I have to admit, you are right. I am motivated, at least to some extent, by a queenie competitive bitchiness. <laughs> I see now that the thing with Paul was really inexcusable. Uh, Paul was, uh, Paul Warner. Um, yes, um, one of our painter friends, um, who lived with Bill Brown, but um, they had um, uh, 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 some sex while I was uh, away, and I suppose I was making the most out of that I could. <laughs> I simply cannot fathom now how I could have been so th thick-skinned. But there again, if only we could talk. Like the evening before last, I had actually just stayed the night at the house where I'd been drinking, purely and simply because they didn't want me to drive back drunk. But I couldn't tell you that, because telling you would have suggested that you minded. 
And that's the kind of minding we never talk of. We only either kid each other about it or get angry. Oh, I'm so saddened and depressed when I get a glimpse, as I do so clearly this morning, of the poker game we play so much of the time, watching each other's faces and listening to each other's voices for clues. And then you say, for example, Dublin's in a strange mood, and then things start to get tense. And because I know this, I start play acting to get them untense again, and that makes everything worse. And you are much the same. Although somehow or other, you always seem franker than I am. Is that because you can afford to be? Am I scared of you? Yes, in a way. But I really almost wish I could be more scared. How can I explain that? It's hard. But to try to get at what I mean, I was so happy the other day when you said that about Dublin having been a jailer and now being a convict. I sort of wish that were true all of the time. Mexicanism? Oh, Mary, what do I care what it's called? I only know that it isn't a wrong thing for me to feel. Our relationship is really so very, very strange. No wonder it gives us trouble. I mean, I often feel that the uh, animals are far more than just a nursery joke or a cuteness. They exist. They are like Jung's myths. They express a kind of freedom and truth which we otherwise wouldn't have. I've written all this, and maybe, having read this far, you will say, what an egomania. I have quite other problems, you will say, which have nothing to do with him. Yes, I know that. And again, if I say I would like to talk about them, you may reply that I'm merely trying to get possession of them. I mean, basically, the feeling you have mentioned of fear what is going to happen to you? What is going to happen to you? Oh, sweetheart, I probably ought not to send you this letter at all. Perhaps you feel nothing but sick of my interference. I don't forget how you said how you had those feelings of sheer hatred while you were up at Stanford. But then again, I'm going to send the letter because the one thing I do want you to know is that I care. I really do ache with misery when the wires are crossed. But then I realize it is sheer egotism to talk about caring. Oh shit, I feel I've somehow gotten something said, but I don't quite know what. I love you. See. And then a P.S. In case I forgot to tell you, I suppose I shall have to go to the Hollow Crown with Cecil on Thursday night. Uh, Cecil uh, was a good friend. Um, um, I, and uh, it seems to be remarkable uh, uh, just um, uh, the tone of that first letter I read. Um, um, uh, just months after uh, this uh, heart-wrenching letter, for me anyway. That's a beautiful letter. Thank you so much, Don. <laughs> I have to say, I've, I've read many of the letters, most of the letters in this book. And, um, Hearing you read them really accentuates, in a way I hadn't been prepared for, the poignancy um, and the wit um, and the eloquence of, of the letters and the intimacy. Um, it, it's really an extraordinary book. And, you know, I, I came to know your work really through 
Christopher Isherwood. As a you know, young gay man growing up in, in, in 80s England, reading the Berlin novels and then later the diaries. So I always had this perspective of you through Christopher, really, through his diaries. And the remarkable thing about the letters for me is that it, the, the sort of equal weight, um, it gives your voice. Um, and the power of your voice in these letters, which for anyone who's familiar with Christopher's work, really it's your voice that's striking, because it's not one we're familiar with. Um, I'm curious about how important that is for you, having you know, your voice in that relationship um, heard as fluidly, fluently as it is in these letters, alongside Christopher's voice in the, in the diaries. Is that a is that a important consideration in bringing these letters into the public domain? Uh, well, um, uh, it was easy for me to uh, uh, write to him because uh, he was always so uh, encouraging uh, of me. Um, I, I would never have become uh, an artist uh, uh, without his uh, uh, encouragement. Um, it was really um, his idea. Um, uh, uh, when um, we first got together in um, uh, early 1953, I was off from um, my, uh, it was just after my freshman year at UCLA, and, uh, which was a hideous experience. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I, I, I just hated that first term. I'd never worked so hard before. I'd taken nothing but solid courses and um, uh, I got a B average, and I, I was so uh, relieved, and um, uh, um, and then um, uh, 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 I met Chris, and we uh, started um, uh, uh, seeing each other, and um, uh, I always been uh, drawing since I was a kid, and um, uh, but um, always from photographs, and usually of. Um, uh, movie actors because I felt I knew them um, uh, from the uh, movies uh, I'd seen them in and uh, that was an early bond uh, between Chris and me because uh, in his teens he was a big movie fan uh, too and even kept a scrapbook uh, of movie clippings mostly from Photoplay magazine um, so um, and it was he um, uh, um, uh, who uh, uh, encouraged me when I showed him my uh, uh, drawings uh, of actors. He recognized them all. And uh, he said, you well, know, you should um, uh, think seriously of trying art school. But um, I was scared of failing, and it took me um, uh, 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 three years uh, uh, before I dared to sign up for a six-week uh, summer uh, course, and um, the result was uh, uh, um, uh, on the Friday of my first week, um, um, I quit UCLA and signed up full-time uh, at the art school uh, in LA, and um, uh, went with relief. Uh, oh, it was such um, um, uh, uh, an important uh, uh, discovery of mine uh, to um, uh, uh, realize that uh, I, I did have some uh, talent for uh, drawing and um, I signed up at Chouinard and um, not only went um, from nine to four um, uh, for the next four years but uh, was often back there from 7 to 10 at night. It was a long drive downtown uh, for me, back and forth uh, from Santa Monica. But um, uh, I realized that, uh, that first week that this was something I could really do. And uh, um, uh, I made uh, 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 progress immediately. Uh, uh, it was such a relief to um, find my vocation that I couldn't get enough of it. And um, uh, 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 when I showed my first drawings to 
uh, Chris or from photographs, he said, uh, have you ever drawn from life? And I said, no. He said, um, uh, well, you should try it, and if you want, um, um, I'll sit for you. And um, uh, he did. And uh, I did my first drawing um, uh, from life of him, and um, it took me uh, um, oh, at least an hour, and he sat very, very still. And um, when I was finished, he got up and um, stood me behind me to look at the drawing, and there was a very long pause before he almost gulped uh, and said, uh, you know, it's good. And um, that drawing, and I've done hundreds uh, 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 since of him, uh, and I, I even did um, drawings of him uh, dying and of his corpse after he was dead, but never did I do a drawing of him that looked as old as that first one. <laughs> and uh, that was really... Um, <laughs> I know, very suffering, and I look at that right now, and uh, yes, it's just like him, but uh, you see, I've gotten used to working from um, uh, photographs of movie stars, and of course, they'd all been uh, retouched, uh, there wasn't a line in them, uh, so I carefully copied every, uh, everything I could see in the photographs, and I carefully copied everything I could see in in Chris's um, uh, face. Uh, and of course, at 48, there were lines and pouches and, and everything faithfully recorded. And uh, it did look like him, but a very, very old uh, But uh, after that gulp, he said, it's good. <laughs> and uh, forever after, he wouldn't um, uh, um, uh, give up uh, urging me to um, uh, try art school, find the idea. Um, I, I want to talk about one of the most adorable um, aspects of, of these letters, and, and that's your nicknames. I think anyone who's perused the book and heard you just read from, from Christopher's will, will be familiar. But, um, you know, I think all couples can identify with the kind of coded language that people use in relationships. But, but you two really took it to a whole new level. Um, and I want to just, you know, give you a few instances of, of your words of endearment for Christopher. Um, rub dub, brumby, dobbin, sainted rubble, adored velvet hide, treasured steed, revered shagmane, and I, I think one of my favorites, which almost sounds like a sex toy, golden love plug. Uh, <laughs> and, and there are literally hundreds of these names. I mean, you're incredibly inventive with them. Um, Catherine Bucknell, who's in the room, who's the amazing editor of this collection, um, she should really r r raise her hand. Yeah, she's here. Yeah. Um, suggests in the introduction that these pet names really enabled you both to analyze your relationship objectively in, in the third person. Um, and I'm really curious about how important writing to each other, these letters, especially as a lot of the time it was long distance writing while you were in London and Christopher was in Santa Monica, how, how these letters helped you um, sustain, build, and at times mend your relationship? Um, uh, writing letters, uh, um, uh, well, um, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, we both try to amu amuse each other. And um, um, using those animal names in the letters, already just uh, a few years after we were living together, um, we were always, when we were alone, uh, uh, Kitty and Dobbin. Um, uh, it was just a, a, a language we had. Uh, uh, and um, by um, objectifying our, ourselves, I, I think it gave, a, gave us um, um, a, a leeway to play uh, uh, all kinds of uh, scenes. And, and uh, uh, to, um, uh, we were always uh, 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 laughing a lot. Uh, he was so witty and, and uh, he um, uh, and naturally I, uh, I was encouraged to try to keep up with him and, and to amuse him so um, um, uh, it was fun uh, writing letters and though we were uh, uh, not often separated uh, when we were we did write uh, uh, a lot 
uh, and um, um, uh, and enjoyed it, and always uh, uh, the Kitty and Dobbin. Um, uh, but that was our secret, and I think Kitty and Dobbin would have been absolutely horrified to think that one day uh, our letters to each other would be here in this book public. Uh, um, uh, I think that would have just scandalized them uh, and, and made them think um, what could have happened. Uh, um, but um, uh, when I read them again, um, uh, uh, they just seemed to me uh, uh, funny and um, uh, uh, fun to read. I, I just felt um, um, uh, they ought to be uh, shared. And, um, um, and uh, Kate, I think, wrote, uh, um, I love her writing and uh, the introductions to his uh, books of diaries and uh, 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 a memoir are just beautifully done. But this one is uh, really my favorite of them all because uh, Kate um, uh, understood everything that was going on and wrote it so beautifully. I, th I think one of the things that uh, might surprise a lot of readers is, is what a shrewd cultural critic you are. And, and if I may be um, so bold, since you, you didn't read from one of your own letters, um, I just want to read from one of yours uh, very, very briefly. Um, this, is, this is Don's review of, um, of the Bible. Um, a movie by John Huston, which I haven't had the pleasure of seeing, and, and I think now I won't. Um, and I'm, I'm just quoting a few lines from here. Huston has managed to make a movie about the creation of the world in which nothing happens. <laughs> for three hours. Um, Richard Harris, as Cain, manages to overact with only one line of dialogue. <laughs> and then Huston, as Noah, a case of the cutes that would make Disney turn away and wretch. <laughs> Kitty's attention was held, but only for an instant, when two fat white ponies were lured onto the ark, followed by some very restless, striped and spotted kitties, clearly very critical of the whole proceedings. <laughs> I mean, the letters are just full of this incredibly rich cultural life you both had. In, in, in one night it's the theater, the next night it's the cinema, then it's an art exhibition. Um, it really made me feel there's such a paucity of culture in my life. I live in New York City. Um, it, was this a reflection of, of your, the times you're in, of your social circle? Uh, is it just that you wrote letters after seeing movies and theater? But you, you seem to spend an inordinate amount of time exploring art. Um, but you see, uh, I, I, it really seems to me that... Um, uh, 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 I was waiting uh, for Chris, like, like um, um, uh, Sleeping Beauty in a way, uh, uh, being awakened, uh, because uh, suddenly uh, here was somebody um, uh, uh, I could really talk to, and uh, uh, who was, um, had, um, uh, he was so witty, and he, he was interested in um, uh, movies just as much as uh, in books, and uh, uh, we love going to the movies uh, together. Um, it, it really, um, uh, uh, being with him, uh, uh, seemed to um, provide me with a, an identity for the first time. And, um, um, uh, and pleasing him uh, as best I could was um, uh, something I loved doing. So uh, um, uh, I was really, uh, um, uh, inspired, and, and if I had any kind of success at all, um, uh, Chris was always so uh, pleased, and, uh, and he participated. Uh, uh, when I would come home from art school, he was always there, let me see what you did. And um, um, I would uh, show him all the drawings at that particular day, and, um, uh, uh, oh, that's a good one. Uh, uh, he would pick out the ones he liked best. Uh, I never had that kind of uh, attention from either of my uh, parents. It was uh, such an incredible uh, luxury for me, and, and uh, I wanted to uh, um, uh, please him as, as, as much he, as he was uh, pleasing me. 
one of the, indeed, one of the things that, um, that I found very instructive um, in terms of you know, our own relationships, I think, is, is the level of support you each gave to each other's careers. Um, you were both ambitious people with, who really wanted to be filled, fulfilled creatively, and it seemed frequently in these letters that Christopher is trying to help you get an engagement and, and further your career, and, and you're doing the same for Christopher. Um, but I think one of the things, as a, certainly as a gay man, that was really striking in these letters that were written in the, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, but certainly in the 60s pre-Stonewall, is the level of comfort you both have with your sexual orientation. The fact that neither of you ever question or have any um, anxieties about being gay men. Um, I, I found that really enlightening because you tend to sort of look back on that so the pre-Stonewall era is quite a dark age, and you know, clearly it was for many people, but you managed to create a world for yourselves in which that was irrelevant. Because uh, Chris wasn't uh, ashamed of himself. Uh, he didn't feel that um, um, being queer was uh, something uh, 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 wrong. And that was just uh, uh, so exhilarating uh, for me uh, uh, to... Uh, 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 know that this uh, 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 truly intelligent man didn't feel the least uh, shame and, and encouraged me to uh, be um, as as uh, uh, strong as he was uh, himself. So uh, what a, a terrific uh, um, uh, role model for he, wa uh, he was uh, for me in, uh, in every way. And uh, he was um, um, uh, he, he really, uh, his writing, I saw he was a perfect example of a, an artist because uh, he cared deeply about um, writing and, um, uh, 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 and yet uh, didn't take himself uh, seriously, uh, but uh, Pope funded himself. Well, he, he just... Uh, uh, educated me in every uh, direction. Um, uh, he really did um, 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 bring me to life. Uh, and um, it made it such fun to be alive. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, you do see your evolution in these letters. Both of you evolved as people. But for me, one of the striking things was, was actually how the 30-year age gap between you completely disappears in these letters. Um, you are two equals, and age seems not to enter into it. You talk to each other as equals, your interests, your and level of, um, of, uh, of kind of insight is equal. Um, I wonder, you know, for, for a lot of people, um, it seems, you know, that there's still, still talk about an age difference as if that was problematic, um, as if you were somehow gullible or taken advantage of. And I, I wonder if, in bringing these letters to light, if it's important to you to still sort of challenge that perception. To, uh, to, to challenge that perception. Um, uh, well, um, uh, uh, I uh, lost my train of thought for a moment. Um, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, so there's no sense in the letters of a, of a gullible young man being taken advantage of at all. Oh, uh, yes. Um, um, uh, the age difference, uh, I think, um, uh, shocked uh, um, uh, people at the time. Uh, uh, there were some of uh, Chris's friends who, um, um, his best uh, woman friend at the time, Peggy Kiskaden, um, um, thoroughly disapproved. And, um, uh, Chris knew that uh, uh, she re regarded me just uh, uh, as a, a sign of his middle age folly that uh, he was um, uh, behaving so uh, um, uh, stupidly. And, um, uh, and finally he uh, broke with her uh, completely. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but, um, the age difference actually gave us many more roles to play with each other. Um, um, uh, 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 yeah, sure, he was uh, uh, a father figure uh, for me, uh, and um, 
I never had um, uh, attention from my own father. He was very uh, remote and was away so much at the time. Um, uh, he uh, worked at Lockheed Aircraft and it was uh, during the war. Um, and uh, so he was often working swing shift, graveyard shift. Uh, uh, my brother Ted and I uh, hardly saw him for several years. And even when we did see him, um, uh, he was um, uh, remote. Uh, uh, we were really um, uh, much more uh, uh, brought up uh, 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 by our mother, whom we both adored. And in fact, um, she was amazing in that um, she never, uh, 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 our mother made any kind of uh, uh, distinction uh, uh, between us. Now, uh, uh, I love you two boys, uh, both of you boys, and uh, we never felt uh, any favoritism uh, uh, from her, and, and that brought Ted and me uh, together. We, we quarreled when I was um, uh, 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 around five, six, but uh, by the uh, time I was seven, eight, we were already, uh, uh, well, the movies, um, uh, the three of us, uh, when my mother was, um, when my father was working the swing shift, uh, uh, she would take uh, us downtown to movies, and we would maybe go to uh, three um, uh, movies, one right after the other. And uh, so we had great rapport with her, and that made up for uh, uh, the lack of it uh, with our father. But. Um, uh, uh, Yes, uh, I was saying the age difference uh, we always felt was um, a benefit rather than a, a, a problem. And, and uh, um, I could poke, poke fun at him, and, and uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it was just a form of uh, intimacy to um, uh, call him a shaggy old <laughs> in his stable. Um, I, I could ask a lot more questions, but I want to give some time to the audience here. Um, I see it's actually getting much later than I realized. So, would anyone um, like to volunteer to ask over here? Yes. Uh, did you meet Christopher's... Oh, did you meet your family of Christopher as well in England? And if so, how did you get along well together? I can tell you. Uh, oh, yes, I did meet... Uh, uh, both his uh, mother, who was quite an elderly uh, woman, um, uh, by the time Chris got uh, involved with me, and um, uh, uh, she and, and his brother Richard, who was seven years younger than Chris, um, 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 uh, lived alone together in this uh, big, old, uh, damp um, house uh, called uh, Wibbersley. And um, uh, Chris uh, and I uh, didn't go to uh, England together until I was 21. Um, um, uh, of course, uh, um, I was already considered an adult when uh, uh, we started uh, uh, living together. Uh, but still, Chris wanted to be sure, so we didn't travel until I was 21. And, um, uh, because um, I, I look very young for my age, and in fact, um, when Chris uh, first brought me to New York uh, in Christmas of 1953, a serious rumor went around uh, uh, New York that Christopher had brought a 12-year-old with him. <laughs> uh, uh, and several people uh, 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 reported back to us. Uh, but, um, uh, uh, that 12 year old was having a whale of a time. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, that um, uh, two week Christmas vacation in New York was just so exciting for me. Uh, New York uh, seemed the most wonderful place I'd ever been to. And of course, uh, with Chris, uh, uh, he had such uh, 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 fascinating friends, and, and um, uh, he took me everywhere with him. Um, and uh, our first trip to Europe, um, 
Uh, we went around the world. We started in um, Hawaii and then uh, Japan. And uh, so by the time we got to England um, in early 1956, um, um, we, we'd been traveling a long time. And uh, uh, Chris's <coughs> first uh, trip to uh, Wibbersley, which was the house that uh, his mother and Richard were living in, um, <coughs> uh, he went by himself, and I stayed in our uh, hotel room in, in London. And um, I, um, uh, I, uh, I knew that uh, he wanted to prepare uh, his mother for <laughs> my arrival, uh, because uh, 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 <laughs> um, uh, uh, he didn't want her to be rude to me, uh, so uh, that took uh, some uh, preparation. And also, his um, brother Richard was quite an encounter for me, because though he looked uh, quite a bit like Chris, he also looked like the village idiot. Oh. Uh, because um, um, uh, he was uh, uh, tousled, um, uh, 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 whatever he was wearing was always stained with dribblings uh, down, down uh, his uh, jacket, his sweater, whatever he was uh, wearing. Uh, his two front teeth were missing. And um, uh, um, every time uh, we were together, I never caught him uh, looking at me. He was always, always looking at me like this. Uh, and, uh, and yet I knew that he could give me a minute, uh, give a minute description, physical description of me. Uh, because um, uh, uh, he wrote to, uh, to Chris uh, a lot, and uh, Chris had even shown some of his letters, and they were all about uh, uh, people in the uh, village they uh, lived in, and they were uh, very careful, uh, uh, detailed descriptions of the people. They were amazing uh, letters. He, he really had a, a, a talent for uh, writing himself, but he was just uh, so strange looking, and um, um, Chris uh, uh, was very careful to prepare he, uh, him and uh, his mother uh, for me, and careful to prepare me for the two of them. Uh, because his mother by that time was already in her 80s. Uh, she was uh, almost middle-aged uh, um, before uh, uh, Chris was born. Uh, uh, so, um, and um, he was determined that she would behave herself with me, and she did. She was, um, uh, uh, we got along perfectly. Yes, so, so. Uh, I thank the library and thank you so much for coming to speak with us tonight. That's a beautiful shade of blue. I just need to tell you, you look so handsome sitting in this light. <laughs> I bought the series yeah. especially for my trip. Uh, I wanted to ask a question about the nature of homosexual love, the love between men, and particularly how We've seen so much in our life of change. Uh, the, the gay liberation movement, the indulgence of the 70s, the plague of the 80s, and now marriage. Um, it seems to be more and more we're being seen to be just like straight people. And I wondered if you had any thoughts on, are we just like straight people? And what is the nature of homosexual love? Um, uh, well, Chris told me, uh, you see, he, um, made me realize that um, um, uh, there was no reason to discriminate um, uh, between different kinds of love because uh, uh, if, if love was genuine, it was the real thing. Uh, it didn't matter um, 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 uh, which sex the, the, the people were. If they were um, uh, 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 loving, they were uh, getting the point. Uh, it didn't matter. Uh, uh, and of course, that uh, uh, up until that time, um, uh, 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 I had the idea that uh, um, uh, 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 homosexuals were uh, uh, despised by society and hidden and. and um, uh, mysterious, and uh, though that was kind of exciting to uh, being um, uh, 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 so, uh, 
uh, hidden uh, from uh, what was considered healthy uh, society. Uh, it had its uh, uh, glamour, but uh, he made me uh, know that there was nothing to be ashamed. Uh, that uh, uh, real love, uh, what was important was that uh, it was love whomever you loved. Uh, and, uh, well, that was uh, exactly what I needed to hear. Anyone else? No? Um, well, we are over our allotted 8 p.m. finish, so um, if there's no more questions, thank you so much, Don. It's been a real pleasure.